Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is how to get through a locked door using soap. Stand by. All right, shout out to 100 Deadly Skills. We've identified a building that we want to gain access to. We don't want to destroy the locks or use any sort of damaging methods to gain entry to that building. What we want to do is recreate a key so we can come and go as we please without anyone being the wiser. So what we have to do is identify the building and the doors and then who has access to those doors and who carries the keys. Once we find out who that person is, we study that person and then acquire that key through various methods so we can make a copy of that key to gain access to the building. While we have these keys in our possession, we want to make a copy of the key very quickly and then return those keys back to where we found them so the person we took them from is none the wiser. To make a quick copy of this key, we're going to use an everyday household item, and that is a bar of soap. This soap smells great. It smells like 17 to 34 months in a federal penitentiary. It goes without saying, I do not condone any B and or E plus burglary. Don't do it. To make an imprint of this key, we're going to take that bar and place it on a flat, firm surface. We're going to press the key into the soap as best as possible. We want to leave a little bit of the handle of the key hanging over the edge of the soap so we can safely remove the key from the soap and keep our imprint in one whole piece. We can use a tool, like a multi-tool, to gain a little bit extra leverage and press the key firmly into the bar of soap so we get a good imprint. Once we're complete, safely and easily remove the key from the soap so we have a good imprint. From here, just remember to clean off the key from all the excess soap before we put it back where we found it. We need to do this quickly so we can return the keys. Once we're satisfied with that imprint in our soap, we can reattach the keys, make sure they're clean, place them back where we got them, and return the purse to where we found it so nobody will suspect a thing. A recommendation is to take out some sort of permanent marker and highlight the edges of the imprint because what we're going to do next requires a good image. However, we're not going to do that and we're just going to go straight to making the image. Now to make that image, we're going to use another everyday household item that most people have in their homes or that we can gain access to through various means and that is just a simple printer. We're going to take our bar of soap where we made the imprint. We're going to upend it, place it on the scanning surface of our copy machine or our printer, and then scan it and make a copy. Make several copies of these and check them to make sure they're good to go. If we need to go back and color the edges with a pen, we can do that. But you'll see here that we have good copies and outlines of the image from our bar of soap key imprint. Always a good idea to make a couple copies of our key imprint. That way, if we damage one copy during this key making process, we can go back, get another one, and then start again. Make sure to take all the copies with you and destroy them when you're done. Everything up until now has been under a time constraint as well as observation from other people. So now, once we get to this point, we can take a break and use a little bit of patience and discipline to cut out the key print that we used from the printer and our imprint mold. We need to take our time and cut out the key exactly as we see it in the image to get a good copy because what we're going to do is take this paper copy, lay it over a piece of metal, and then carve out an actual key. Another idea, make sure you hang on to the negative of that key stencil so we can use it to create another key if this original stencil fails. Now that we have our stencil cut out from the image of our imprint mold that we made with the key and the soap, we now need to get a piece of metal that we can form into a key using this stencil as an outline to create the key exactly like we found it. A good piece of metal needs to be something that's flexible so it will actually fit inside the lock, yet strong enough when we cut it out that the teeth of the key will position the pins within the lock so we can actually rotate the sear of that lock and gain access or entry to the building or room that we're trying to get in. A good piece of metal we can use and another idea or use for an Altoids tin is the bottom portion cutting it out to make a key to actually gain access to a building or room bypassing the lock. The bottom portion of that Altoids tin is going to be the best material because it's completely flat, flexible to get in the keyhole, but rigid enough to actually activate the pins so we can rotate the sear and gain access to the room and open the door. All we have to do is cut it out with our penny cutters or combat shears and then take our stencil of the key and tape it right over top of the material. 
This next part is extremely important, so we need to take our time and exercise a little bit of patience. What we're going to do is take out a fine tip permanent map marker that is black, and we're going to outline the stencil of our key onto this piece of metal that we cut off that Altoids tin. We're just going to follow the key around as precisely as possible, taking our time. Once we're done, we can take a look at the stencil. If we have to erase it and start over, it's too easy, we can do that. But once we're done and satisfied, remove the stencil. Now that we have our stencil drawn onto our piece of metal and we're satisfied with that, now we can cut out our key. This is going to be the most tedious and time consuming part of the entire demo. We need good tools to be able to cut this out. So we have small shears as well as our penny cutters or combat shears to start hogging away material from our piece of metal. What we start with is just taking off a lot of the meat from that piece of metal to get down to a basic key shape. Once we get that key shape, now we can take our finer tools, those smaller pliers, and begin to cut away the material surrounding the teeth of our key. And once we're done with that, we have our key complete, we're ready to go. We can also double check our work by taking our stencil that we removed and placing it back onto our key to see how the stencil lines up with our initial cuts. It's better to leave a little bit of material on that piece of metal and then take away. We can always take away, but we can't add on. So we want to double check our work to make it as precise as possible. Now that piece of metal we cut off of that Altoids tin is not going to be strong enough to rotate the sear of the door lock so we can rotate the handle and gain access to the room or building we're trying to get into. So we need to create something that's going to put tension on the sear so we can actually rotate it safely without breaking the key and then rotate the doorknob. So we're going to make a simple tension wrench from another everyday item, in this case a paper clip, by bending it in half and then bending that half into an L shape. And just like that, our imitation key and tension wrench are good to go. And when the opportunity arises, we can now attempt to gain entry to that building or that room that we're trying to access. We approach the door, slide our imitation key into the keyhole. It's flexible metal material from the bottom of that Altoids tin, so it will begin to fit. The teeth of the key will set the pins of the lock, enabling us to rotate the sear. We then take our tension wrench, place it into the keyhole at the bottom of the keyhole, and then begin applying tension to rotate the lock and activate the sear, as well as the door handle, so we can open that door, gain access to that room or that building, and then quickly move through the doorway, remove our tension wrench, remove the imitation key from the keyhole, and then shut the door behind us and lock it. That way nobody will ever know that we gained entry. All right, guys, another down to dirty video today, another urban survival skill, how to pick a lock or gain entry to a building or a room using just a bar of soap and everyday household items to create a key and a tension wrench to get through that doorway. Well, I really hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I really appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for the you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.